Before I provide this speech, uh, Mark asked me many questions. It means I didn't <laughs> write in my speech the answers of that questions. Then maybe we can exchange and, and discuss that later on. Uh, I'm going to talk about the achievements and challenges that we actually uh, achieved in the past 18 years since uh, the fall of Taliban regime with the help and support of uh, international community. Uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me uh, today to share some information regarding Afghanistan's achievements and uh, the developments that uh, are taking place after the fall of the Taliban regime. In 2001, the international community's operation that was led by the United States helped Afghanistan's people to free their country, their homeland, from a proxy group called Taliban, or let the international terrorist groups to use the country as a safe haven for terrorist activities. Today, Afghanistan is different. We have passed our dark days of war and destruction. People started new way of life with full of hope for the future. I'm going to thank the substantial help and assistance of our international strategic partners, uh, including NATO forces, that made Afghanistan to have great achievements in terms of political transition, rebuilding institutions, uh, exercising democratic process, uh, such as presidential and parliamentary elections, and reconstructing the national economy from ground zero. Our education system improved and enhanced. Public health service uh, expanded and the quality assurance put in place. Free media created, which is playing a major role in the society as the critical elements of democracy. Women's rights are protected, and we start to build our national police and defense security forces organizations. We have recently experienced an important phase of democracy. Our parliamentary election was held on the 20th of October 2018, seven months ago, which was the third parliamentary election since the fall of the Taliban regime. The election and the people participation, including men and women, in the process of seeing the success of democracy, despite the security threats and many other obstacles, people participated enormously and practiced their rights to vote to enhance the democratic process of election and showed their bravery and optimism for a prosperous future and democratic society. Afghanistan, with the support of international community and its strategic partners, working towards peace, stability, democracy, good governance, development program, and self-reliance, and is experiencing a new era of change. We have shown commitment to creating opportunities by demonstrating our ability, abilities to tackle the major challenges. In this regard, the National Unity Government makes efforts to reform the institutions and fight, and fight against corruption. We believe that for a prosperous future, quality of life, to achieve government goals, social and political justice is necessary. So to achieve that, education can play an important role. Therefore, the de development progress of our education system is amazing. A school enrollment has increased from less than one million, means one person female in 2001, to 9.3 million, 38 person female, in 2018, numbers of teachers in government schools increased from less, less than 16,000 10 person female in 2001 to more than 200,000 34 person female in 2018. Over 62% of teachers have the qualification of grade 14 and above, and there are more than 
20,000 teachers in private schools in 2018. Moreover, the new national curriculum and textbooks developed have been implemented. Education supervision and monitoring and evaluation mechanism are in place to ensure the delivery of fair and quality education. In our higher education system, we also witness a great change. From a few public universities in a few major cities 18 years ago, now the number of public universities increased to 38 with 186,000 student, students and 143 private universities and institutions with 223,058 students. In addition to that, hundreds of students yearly study abroad and they come back with new experience and new knowledge which can help capacity building strategy and also our uh, connection to the world. Since 2001, Afghanistan has made significant progress towards rebuilding the political system, public health, and all other areas. The life expectancy has been dramatically improved from 44 to 63 years. Women engagement in different aspects is considerably increased. And good example is that they have occupied 68 seats out of 250, which makes 27% of the House of Parliament. The key electoral members, judicial and executive branches and representatives have been enhanced. Remarkably, gender equality and women's civic and political rights and leadership have also increased. The regional economy and connectivity is improved. We are working on our trade and transit strategy the Lapis Lazuli Agreement is a great example, which this initiative we will reinforce our infrastructure and enhance our connectivity, development, and energy. That will allow us to sell our goods and export our product to Europe. Considering Afghanistan's foreign policy, which the primary focus of our ties and shared values has to be our neighborhood, which is our immediate periphery, both our security and prosperity are closely interlinked and interdependent with our neighbors. We have impact a new vision to, to the relationship in the region, which entails routinized exchange, exchanges, greater uh, connectivities, and growth on the economy. This also involves, involves leveraging our common civilizational heritage to build a relaxed relationship, closer contact and deeper connection within the region. How our approach has been essentially consultative and outcome oriented that ties it with our security interests. Although with the above mentioned achievements, we have still challenges to overcome particularly in terms of peace, security, and unemployment. We believe that to end the conflict, the political solution is needed. The National Unity Government of Afghanistan, few months, ag few months back, announced unconditional peace talk with the Taliban insurgency group. In addition to that, our strategy, our strategic partner playing a substantial role for peace process. The State Department uh, Special Representative for Reconciliation, Zalmay Khalilzad, efforts is welcomed for his attempt to bring in Taliban to the negotiation table with the government of Afghanistan. As Taliban showed during their negotiation in different places, different level, with different delegations that they are unable to take decisions independently. We are open to negotiations and we believe on sustainable peace and security. Therefore, our government announced and offered unconditional peace talk to the Taliban to end the conflict. The initiative of peace talks with the Taliban welcomed by the international community and our strategic partners and will be leading 
by the national unity government. Germany also played an important role for peace process, and their role will be substantial in the future. And ba based on my information, uh, they will uh, cooperate with the Qataris and other international partners in terms of managing and organizing peace talk between the government of Afghanistan and the Taliban. Our new generation rule with new values and fresh thinking, they are feeling responsibility and are involved in politics, economy, media, civil society, and so on. I believe we cannot go back to the dark days of the Taliban regime. The new generation is committed to protect the country and democracy, which achieved by the 10,000s of our national defense, police, and security life. We will hold presidential election in September 28, and our government prepare and committed on the timing election. In conclusion, I thank our friends and strategic partners that helped and assist Afghanistan to achieve its target goals in the past 18 years. The country that was and is involved for four decades of war, moving towards self-reliance, improving the rule of law, protecting women's rights, and committed to democracy and an inclusion society for a prosperous future. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, Taliban is not a regime anymore. They are an insurgency group now. And uh, with the peace talk, any peace talks is welcomed by the government of Afghanistan. But uh, we cannot predict the result and the consequences of, of the peace talk yet. Uh, uh, yes, we, we are, we hope it's work, but uh, in terms of uh, protecting women rights, uh, freedom of speech, and other um, uh, values uh, that's actually uh, created and protected in the past 18 years in Afghanistan, we are responsible to protect that. Means we cannot uh, actually stand by the promise of, of the Taliban. It is the government job and responsibility to protect um, uh, people's rights and, and citizen rights in, in any uh, areas. Uh, not just uh, 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 women's right. As um, you definitely you are aware, we we always announce that um, uh, there is a red lines which is not negotiable with uh, specifically the constitutions of Afghanistan and women's right, you know, and also the national and um, uh, national defense and, and security forces. Uh, they, are, they are a red line for, for Afghanistan's government. It, it is not negotiable with, with any group, including Taliban.
Thank you. Uh, the peace talk actually starts in Doha, in Qatar. And uh, the special representative of the State Department of the United States, Mr. Zalmay Khalilzad, negotiated uh, uh, with the Taliban for, for the sixth round now. And uh, also, we have some uh, uh, approaches by, by other countries, such as Uzbekistan and, and uh, Russia. Uh, now, um, Germany, as I said, as I mentioned, uh, playing an important role in the future. And they are, they are working with, with Qataris uh, to actually organizing and um, uh, facilitating, you know, the situation to bring the Taliban to negotiation, to the negotiation table with the government of Afghanistan. And also we have another pillar. We have national pillar in terms of peace process. Uh, we have regional pillars and we have international pillars. But uh, at the moment, um, uh, they are trying specifically the uh, Zalmay Khalilzad uh, trying to to bring uh, the Taliban group, you know, uh, in the negotiation ta table with the uh, Afghanistan government. Okay. Um, uh, once when uh, uh, the, uh, the special representative of the United States spoke with the, with the Taliban and they asked for the list, and the list which was prepared by the presidential palace, there were at least three women, including, uh, if that was 11 of them, of the delegations, and three of them were women. And um, they, they are working in our level of the government in the level of deputy ministers. Yes, and also we have uh, civil societies uh, they are, they are in, in Afghanistan. They are active in, in terms of peace process. Uh, but uh, the delegation which will be announced in the future, that will include uh, people from civil society, from media, and from the government as well. Yeah. Yes? Okay, thank you. I, I don't know, uh, to be honest, uh, much about African culture, but I can tell about, uh, I can speak about Taliban culture. Means uh, they, they were created, uh, means that the, the peace process in Afghanistan itself is very complicated. Okay. <laughs> thank you then. I said, how oh, I can compare that? <laughs> <laughs> a great expert of Afghanistan sitting here, then you will talk. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the peace process itself is, is, is very complicated in Afghanistan. First of all, the war in Afghanistan, it is not internal war or, or civil war. It is uh, the consequences of Cold War. Yeah? The presence of extremism and terrorism in the region is the consequences of Cold War. So uh, with the creation of Taliban, they have uh, 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 Islamic ideology, but they have, they interpret it in different ways, you know, on their own ways. They have, they means, uh, inter yeah, do you want? Okay. Uh, 
so uh, they, their, their action actually based on Sharia law, as they say it, you know, that's their interpretation. So uh, I cannot see any changes in terms of values in the, when means Taliban was in power and now. And if you compare to, to the difference uh, culture between the today's Afghanistan society and Taliban, it is much different. Yes, completely different, specifically with the rules of new generation, specifically in the past 18 years. Yes, uh, we have now uh, media, everyone can say, you know, their own opinion to the government, or I mean they can criticize the government. They can uh, uh, share their opinion, you know, means lots of discussions, political discussion will take place in media. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, might be, if I'm, I'm not wrong about, as, as far as I got the numbers, 86 uh, private uh, TV stations we got in Afghanistan. Yeah? And uh, uh, hundreds uh, newspapers. So the young generation actually connected with, with the world, means they, they are aware what's going around them, specifically people who are living in the cities, yeah, who actually have access to, to media, to electricity, to uh, internet. So uh, it, is, it is completely mm, uh, different values and different uh, culture, but uh, when you come to the reconciliations, you have to uh, do a great, you know, diplomacy to work, you know, to, to actually accept uh, 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 their values and they should accept your values to come uh, uh, to actually reach, you know, a peace deal. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, you. Sorry. Oh, I said it is the no, no, no. I said the presence of extremism and terrorist groups are the the consequences of of the Cold War or the legacy of the Cold War, I should say. But that that legacy in defining what the legacy itself is, so <coughs> their conflict right now, though it may be the result of a Cold War, would you still say that their um, outbreak would be a civil war? Would you call it like a civil outbreak? What is it exactly? The conflict between them and Afghanistan? Um, uh, as, as I mentioned in, in my speech, Taliban are not an independent group. Yeah? They are a, a proxy group. Right, which is why one might think it would be a civil war, but it would be more accurate to say it's a civil war. No, because, because it is not, we cannot call it civil war because they are fighting for some other interests, for other countries' interests. And uh, means in Afghanistan, that's why I said the situation is very complicated. You have um, regional pillars and international pillars. Yes, we, Afghanistan is surrounded by Iran, Pakistan, China, Russia, then furthermore Turkey, and then you have uh, Saudi Arabia involved in, in the politics of Afghanistan, then the international community. Yeah, it is not very easy to actually explain things like, okay, just we, we know the, the group of Taliban, yeah? Russia, we didn't know Russia have, have contact, you know, or means no Taliban, or they have contact with Taliban. With the, the Taliban regime actually was, was the great enemy of, of, of uh, Russia. So when the peace talk come, you know, and then uh, Russia invited, the, invited the, the Taliban group and they said we have a relationship with, with the Taliban and the Taliban group went to Russia, to Moscow, you know. So it is very, very complicated. We have um, different pillars and different levels. Uh, you can, <laughs> it is, it is for uh, every country in this world actually fighting for their national interest. Yes. Uh, me and there is uh, economic interest. Yes. There are political interest, you know, uh, means I can, I cannot, go, I cannot go to, to the details of uh, countries who got interest in Afghanistan. So I say generally. That's the reason.
Yes. Okay. Um, you talk about the, that teacher has been confident in uh, Afghanistan. And uh, um, I can uh, just add one comment on that, that uh, I know many of my teachers are coming in Pakistan, and they make the identity in Pakistan, and they never go back to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, we cannot generalize about asylum uh, or people who are actually going immigrate in in countries in different countries. We have uh, more than two million uh, immigrants in Iran, in Pakistan as well. But on yearly basis, you can see the movements of millions of people. You know, between the borders of Iran and Pakistan. <laughs> means uh, that doesn't means uh, means Afghanistan people uh, lost their confidence and that they are moving it means from uh, because uh, we don't have the exact statistic of uh, our uh, population so it's around 30 million I can say uh, so how many people are immigrated and how many people are living in Afghanistan yeah uh, then more than 25 million people living in Afghanistan. So uh, means there is something, there is confidence that, I mean, they have confidence to live and to work for their country. Means uh, 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 in terms of government, yes, I said um, uh, government uh, try its best to provide uh, good service. And we try to actually uh, exercise good governance for the people, but still we, we got challenges. We are fighting with, with 20 uh, terrorist groups in Afghanistan. It is not national terrorist group, it's international terrorist groups, yeah? They are fighting in Afghanistan. So it is not easy. We are a developed country, you know, landlocked country, and depending on international assistance, we try our best to do. But yes, uh, people people uh, are working, leaving, you know, uh, despite uh, on, on daily basis explosion, uh, people is still uh, actually have confidence to, to do work for their country. I said bit softer. I answered bit softer. I said we cannot generalize. <laughs> yeah. People looking for, for good life always, and uh, means uh, uh, thousands of people are living in, in different countries. They got new identity, they accept it, and they have uh, double nationality as well, you know. Afghanistan nationality and, and some other countries. I think we've got time for just one more gentleman here. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you think there will be a delay once again to the uh, date of election? 
Okay. Uh, as far as I have information, so I can say confidently that the priority of uh, the government and the international community in Afghanistan is election, not peace talk at the moment. It's, it's a bit shifting and move and changes. Used to, yes, we told that uh, if means peace process and peace talks going forward, and there if we can see some positive changes, then might be the election will delay. But uh, uh, for the moment, the priority is election, and it will be on the 28th of September. 